Have you ever found yourself in a place where you felt both powerful and vulnerable at the same time? Like perhaps you felt powerful walking in your gifts, but yet vulnerable in becoming the person that's required to take that leap into the next level. I recently heard an interview from Will Smith and he quotes, people don't really realize what it takes to win, what it takes to win. Like when I listen to the entire clip, which we will debrief once we enter into the full episode, I thought about the struggle that's required to enter into that next level and how sometimes when we're in that struggle of feeling powerful in one place and vulnerable in the other, how many of us take that as a sign to give up, that I'm not good enough, it's not working, who am I? And we start to question things. But what if that struggle is part of the process that propels you into that next level of creating generational wealth. You guys, get ready for an incredible episode of Prayers for Your Business as we discuss embracing the duality of power and vulnerability. What's up, leader? Welcome to the Gifted Entrepreneur Show, the dopest podcast on the planet that explores the world of Christian entrepreneurship and reveals secrets to unlocking your unique codes to create generational wealth. I'm your host, LaDondra Hervey, wife, mom, award-winning author, and Christian business coach who's excited to take you on a transformational journey of taking bold steps to unlock your unique gifts and pursue your entrepreneurial dreams with unwavering faith. Buckle up. It's time to make your dreams of creating generational wealth a reality. Hey, 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 what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Gifted Entrepreneur Show, where we unlock the codes to create generational wealth using your God-given gifts. Today, I'm really excited about our episode because as we talk about the whole thing in creating generational wealth, and that is the theme of this podcast, Have you ever realized and have you taken note that in order for you to truly build your generational wealth, that it requires you to become more? It requires you to release the old self, to truly explore the full potential that exist on the inside of you to it requires you to go into the deep it requires you to get out of the boat of your comfort zone like peter did it requires you to take another level of trust and even have that desire to ask father god Can I come? It requires you to even have a surrendered heart to listen in deep enough to shut out the noise of the external and to tap in to the eternal, to hear that still small voice of the Lord that says, come. And once you hear those words, come, then there's another level that requires you to get out of the boat. Hmm. To get out of the boat of your comfort zone. To get out of the boat of 
your community and what feels comfortable like Peter did, got out of the boat of a community of disciples that he had been walking with to trust the inkling that he felt from the Lord to come. And when I think about this example, you guys, I had so many examples in my mind, but I know that this one is Holy Spirit led. This is, just, this is the one he wanted to come forward. When I think about this, I, can, I can't help but to sense that Peter, who once by profession is known as a fisherman, so quite naturally, being on the water and being in a boat where he's skilled at, this is an area where he's skilled at, this is an area where he's had years and years of training. I can't help but to think that in that moment while he was in the boat, there was no fear of being in the boat because this was a lifestyle and this was an area that he felt powerful and he felt equipped, he felt qualified, he felt that this is something where I have a confidence that I can do this because I've been doing this. And so in this moment, I can't help but to feel that Peter felt powerful, unlike someone like maybe Luke, who is a physician who didn't have quite as much experience being on a boat and understanding the dynamics of the waves crushing against the, the, the boat and the crushing, crushing against the walls of, of that boat and understanding that that's just part of the process. So it for him, Peter, he had experience. So in that area, I can't help but to feel that he felt powerful. But then at the same time, the Lord is calling him and beckoning him. There's a desire, an inclination put in his heart to test the Lord. When he saw the, the Lord out on the ways and out on the ocean, and he said, God, if this is you, can I come? And I'm paraphrasing, you guys. I, I'm not reading. I, I'm paraphrasing so you can walk with me. And so there's a desire to test the Lord and take things to another level. To get out of the boat of where a situation where he already feels powerful. To step out into a situation where traditionally... You shouldn't be able to stand on water, but yet he wanted to, he felt a beckoning, he felt a wooing to step out of the boat into a vulnerable situation to trust the Lord, to trust the Lord. And so how many of us have found ourselves in a place to where we felt powerful and yet vulnerable at the same time because I can't help but to believe that Peter felt vulnerable stepping out onto the water. Something that traditionally, like I said, is not designed to hold up a human. You, it, by, by default, you step on water, you sink down, gravity pulls you down unless you're floating up and because you've lost life or you're floating up because how you you're floating on water but if you just step out by default gravity is designed to pull you down on water so I can't help but to believe that he felt vulnerable in that moment what what, what and it's so much that even where it says that as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord he found power but then when he took his eyes off the Lord, he started to look around and think about maybe what am I doing? Who am I? And all the noise 
This is not how this traditionally work. So what's happening? And maybe he got in his head and this new level felt heavy. And so he started to sink in his doubts and sink into in his insecurity sink into the confusion of the situation of how is this even working how am i defying the law right now how many of you have found yourself in this place to where again you've been in the struggle of feeling powerful and vulnerable at the same time and maybe in those moments you felt this is the time to throw in the towel. Maybe in those moments you felt that you had to choose between being powerful and feeling vulnerable at the same time. But you guys, I come to tell you, I want to share the good news is that you can you don't have to choose. You can live in the duality of being powerful and yet feeling vulnerable. In fact, it's required. As you level up and become the person who is ready to create generational wealth. We hear a lot of people talking about the hype of creating generational wealth. But we hear very few conversations of what's required to create that generational wealth. And when we find ourselves getting out of the boat and getting into the deep of the waters of building that legacy business and things start to not work out the way that we thought or we have to shed other parts of us, other layers of us that we thought that we needed to hold on to for our safety and our security. We move from feeling powerful as Peter was powerful as a fisher man, but God was trying to develop a new identity, one who would walk with him and trust him, one who would be able to experience him at a deeper level so that he can step into the true intention and identity that God had for him to be a fisher of men. And in order for us to be a fisher of men, you have to become more. You have to be willing to release the old self in order to go into the deep to discover and explore the other sides of your personality, the other sides of that untapped potential and leadership, the other side of the, the lioness that, that exists on the other side, the one who has been, that, that's, that knows no limitation, the one who can experience true freedom in Christ. How many of you have given yourself permission to do that? Or are you holding on to the safety net of who you think you should be? Listen, I wrote a book, Powerful Beyond Belief. The subtitle of that book, it says, it's time to release who you think you need to be to become the entrepreneur that you were called to be. And so many times we're holding on to an old identity because it's who we think we need to be because it's the one that's appeasing to man. It's the one that has helped us to survive through the, 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 the toils and the waves of life, the and it's the one that has kept us safe. But what if that's not that same person? You have to release that person to level up into your kingship. What if David decided to stay in a shepherd's mentality and never 
realized his potential of kingship. There was a gap between shepherd and king, and there had to there there was a struggle from become a struggle of becoming, a struggle of feeling powerful as shepherd to a struggle of walking the journey to becoming a king. And many of us find ourselves as we are walking the beautiful journey of entrepreneur that at times it really doesn't feel beautiful because in one moment you can feel really powerful. I know who I am. I know what I'm doing. I know my audience. And then did at the same time, then God is calling you to another level. And he's saying, Hey daughter, there's more that I require of thee. There is more that I have that's available to you. And you guys, as I think about this, I, I introduced this episode with a clip from from uh, Will Smith and he talked about that literally he says that most people don't really understand what it really requires uh, to 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 win and when he said that he was talking about that he was in a, a conversation with the producer of the original bad boys Don Simpson and he said, when he was looking at this, uh, the screen set of the show, Will Smith said, it's good. It looks like we are about at 90%. And Don Simpson told him, the great thing about being at 90% is at least you know you're halfway there. And I love this because then Will Smith, he goes on to say that the difference between 90% and 100% is a lifetime of difference. And so when I when I really looked at that and I really listened in, he said that the difference between good and great is underestimated. Listen y'all, good there's a point in your life to where you can feel good. And when you're at that place to where you feel good, it's working. I'm at 90%. You might feel powerful. You may feel that your talent is working for you. But in order to get to the 100%, that untapped level of greatness, it requires a whole nother level of focus and a whole nother level of discipline. It requires us to go through the struggle of being powerful, living in the duality of feeling powerful and vulnerable at the same time. Because part of me says that I have arrived, but the other part says that there's still more available. And in order for me to tap into that more, then I have to go be willing to release and shed some old layers. I have to be willing to go into the deep. I have to be willing to stretch past my comfort zone, the line that I already established for myself, that 90% that I already said in my mind that is good. I have to be willing to get to the other side of that. And in order for me to get to the other side of that, I have to be vulnerable enough to explore what the untapped 10% of my potential is. And, and and that's not the part of me where I get to stay uh, comfortable and complacent. That's the part of me where I get to rise up and to that next level of greatness. That's the part of me where I get to go from good into the next level of great. That's the part of me where I get to go from the, the known to explore the unknown. That's the part of me where I get to defy the limitations of what I thought was acceptable. That's the part of me where it's a gap between the impossible uh, and 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 the well the reality of what's possible to the reality of the impossible. It's the part of me where I get to surrender myself and say for with Christ, nothing is impossible. And in order for me to tap into what seems to be impossible, that's that part where I have to be willing to be vulnerable. Be vulnerable to enough to step out of my comfort zone. Be willing 
to step out of what the safety of what feels safe and the support when I looked up the word vulnerable it says susceptible to physical or emotional attack or, and harm you know when I list, look at that <laughs> the thing the, the verse and I hadn't looked this up prior to so I know that this is the Lord he says that I I'm sending you out as sheep amongst wolves. In order for you to be a sheep amongst a wolf, you're vulnerable. But the cool part about that is we serve a God who is, is full of intention. And so, although we're sent out as sheep, that, that sheep part of us appears here it at here here's the key it appears to be vulnerable but as that she we as she is willing to put ourselves out there among the 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 wolves of the naysayers among the wolves of those who to, of reject, who have rejected the idea that success is possible that, that where we're even being a, willing to be vulnerable to face our own selves and our own thoughts of of failure and be willing to get out and face the the adversary whatever that adversary is because your adversary could very well be you against you it could be you against your haters. It could be you against the giants in other industries. It could be you against your lack of your 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 lack of resources. So you feel, or it could be you against you and your environment. Whatever it is, it's what your. It, it could be you against your own thoughts and what you feel. Uh, ninety that's keeping you safe in the ninety that's stopping you to get to that to that hundred percent to bridge the gap of that last ten percent to reach that hundred percent of true greatness and so the cool thing about this all is though you may go out and it feels as if you may be a sheep a sheep amongst wolves within that sheep which is you and me is power unlimited power because the power of the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you the Ark of the Covenant is the power that rests on the inside of you God's power his presence his authority is on the inside of you and so when you are willing to get past what you thought was an obstacle and to be vulnerable enough to go into the deep, you realize that there is power. There is unlimitless power on the inside of you that can break a generational curse, that can build a legacy that lasts a lifetime that transfers over into your children's children it breaks the stronghold of the mental thoughts that they dealt with of depression anxiety it breaks the stronghold of financial oppression it breaks the stronghold of limits that you and ceilings that you put on yourself that said that I'm not enough it breaks the stronghold off of off of legacies uh, that have been with with hell and it releases a whole new level where you enter into eternal greatness this is the power of walking in the duality of being vulnerable and feeling powerful at the same time so my friend my encouragement for you today is to not quit just because right now you feel powerful, you feel powerful in your gift, but yet you may feel that there you've plateaued maybe in your finances. Maybe you feel 
you've plateaued in attracting new clients. Maybe you feel that you've plateaued in attracting investors or re reaching the financial uh, resources that you need and you're feeling real vulnerable right now. But the powerful side of you still exists because you know that you were the one anointed and appointed for the assignment, but yet you feel vulnerable because you don't have or you feel like you're trying to get to the next level that the stretch feels insurmountable in your mind. And so it where you felt powerful now, you're in the part where I'm powerful, but yet I feel vulnerable. Embrace the journey. Because on the other side is the gift of tapping into that untapped potential. On the other side is the blessing of going from good to great. On the other side is the eternal reward. So press in and press towards the mark and finish the race that you started. That is the gift. Listen, I pray that you have been blessed by this episode. Walking through this episode, even in myself, it's really just been a blessing. And I pray that you've been blessed in the same way. And if you're looking for resources to really dig in deeper and be intentional about your time with Christ and developing your days and being intentional on what what it means to really bridge the gap from where you are to where you're trying to go bridge the gap from the 90 to 100 because when uh, I looked at when I listened to that clip with Will Smith he said the difference between the 90 percent and getting to 100 percent is, is, is lifetimes hmm. and he ended with that you can be talented to be good, but it requires to get to that next level of greatness. It requires a level of a sharpness and discipline that is uncommon. And he goes on to say that even though it's simple, it's just not easy. And so if you're really ready to get intentional about what that looks like for you, some resources that I want to recommend to you is my book, Powerful Beyond Belief. You can find that on Amazon. All you have to do is look up Powerful Beyond Belief. It's time to release who you think you need to be to become the entrepreneur that you were called to be. I'll put the link in the bio for you just to make it easy. And um, actually the description of this podcast, y'all always say the bio. And uh, also... You can, another resource is Intentional Mornings with God. That is a 30 minute, that's a mini course to teach you how to be intentional with uh, planning out your days in 30 minutes or less with God. And uh, another resource is if you need to get in a community of being with uh, like-minded entrepreneurs who is going to rub off on you in a positive way to really help you to walk in the duality of being vulnerable and powerful at the same time then i want to invite you to our faith and business mixer if you are in the dfw area join us at waxahachie texas uh, at freedom international church on july the 7th i believe where we will be having our town hall it's actually july 9th at 6 30 where we'll be having a faith and business town hall meeting. And in this town hall meeting, we're going to have open forum conversations to really collaborate to help you to take your business to the next level to see what the needs are. Because a lot of times there's a lot of needs that's unspoken and business owners are suffering in silence and we want to break down those, those, those walls and those silos to really help you. So walk into another level of being powerful beyond belief because it's in you and it's available but you got to be willing to get to the other side and so the registration for that free event it will be in the description of this podcast episode you guys until next continue to next time continue to stay blessed by the best did that episode feel juicy or what if so please 
do me a favor and take 30 seconds to write a review? Your review helps us to spread the mission of creating generational wealth around the world. And if you tag me on IG stories, I'll be sure to reshare the love. And don't forget to join our Kingdom Collaborators Network, where we're coming together to intentionally collaborate to grow our business. Until next time, remember, for with Christ, nothing is impossible.